lot of the time, the reward is simply in knowing that you were there for someone. You helped someone else in some way. Someone direly needed assistance. And through your giving, again, financially, of yourself, of your talents, you were able to help those individuals. The reward is knowing that someone was helped through your efforts. The third category we're going to look at, respect of a citizen. As a Christian citizen, what is it that we are supposed to respect? Well, number one, rules. We are to follow the rules of the land. The law set forth by our leaders in government. We don't have to agree with everything they say and everything they do. The laws set forth sometimes forget people. Sometimes we have to take in the fact that we are to ignore some laws if they are in contrast to God's laws. First Peter 2, 13 through 15. Therefore, submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors, as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Most of the laws that are handed down actually are for our own good. They are designed to protect the people. Even though, on occasion, some will be left out, like unborn children. We are to speak out against unjust laws and urge our leaders to do something about them. We have that right. So don't be, as the scripture said, among the foolish. We are also to respect our rulers. Now, I don't agree with everything the president says or does. In fact, I don't think I have ever agreed with everything any president has always said and done. But I respect the office. I respect the position. We are to respect the office and the position. Same goes for senators and representatives, governors, all of our officials, but we are to respect them all and their position. <clears throat> First Peter 2.17, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. We, of course, do not have a king in the United States, but we are to appreciate, respect, and honor our leaders. We are also to respect righteousness. Righteousness exalts a nation. No nation will be great and remain great without the help of God. Proverbs 14.34 says almost exactly that. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Our nation once exalted righteousness in a big way. Our first president, George Washington, once said, it is impossible to rightly govern a nation without God in the Bible. Over the years, that exaltation of righteousness has been waning. It's been backsliding. We still have a degree of exaltation, but it is definitely on the decrease. Many of our presidents make it a point to be seen going to church, holding up a Bible, telling us how much God means to them and how much it means to this nation. How sincere they are is between them and God. Only God knows for sure. We, however, are to put forth righteousness. We are to live a life that emulates Jesus Christ. We are, as Christian citizens, to obey the Word of God. We are to obey the teachings of Jesus Christ. 
Let's wrap this up here. President John F. Kennedy once said, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. We as Christian citizens can do many things. Here are just four of them. One, we can pray. Pray for our nation. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our citizens. Pray for one another. Pray in earnest. Great things often begin with a simple prayer. So pray for this nation, its leaders, and they are led toward God. Vote. Now, this is not a political statement. I'm not telling you to go out and vote for any particular thing or against any particular thing. But if you don't vote, if you don't get involved in the system, how can you complain about it? So get out, vote, get your opinion, your stand put on the record. Display civic pride. We are still a great nation. We have more liberties than almost any other country in the world. Show your appreciation for those liberties. And finally, evangelize. We are still considered more or less a godly country. It is going to grow to be less and less, though, unless we get out and evangelize. Grow the kingdom of God. Make it so that more and more godly people are getting out there and voting and displaying civic pride and praying. We need to win this nation over to Christ. So I say, may God bless America again. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you today knowing that you are all-powerful. There is nothing beyond you. Anything that you desire, you can do. We need to pray to you in earnest. We need to pray to you for this nation, the citizens, the leaders, everyone. We need to pray that we can expand your kingdom. This, these people can grow for you, mature in you, bring others to you. Lord, we thank you for this nation and thank you for the blessings we have experienced in this nation. Lord, may this country grow closer to you. Thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' precious name.